Being valuable or rare is no safeguard against being thrown away or left behind. If it were, we wouldn't see so many examples of rare and special cars being carelessly abandoned by the roadside or left to fester in barns or garages. It's a shame that this happens, but it's also a happy occasion when somebody finds a rare gem years later and manages to get it back up and running again. Let's check out the stories of some particularly rare and valuable abandoned cars in this video. Let's start with this 52-year-old Dodge Charger that turned up in a garage in Albuquerque, USA in May 2020. A Dodge of this age would be a great find in any circumstance, but this one has a unique engine that makes it even more valuable. Considering the fact that it's been buried under junk since 2003, it's in surprisingly good condition. The green and black paintwork is the factory's original and under the hood is a 6.3 liter V8 engine capable of producing 294 horsepower. That isn't the powerhouse that the muscle car would have been fitted with originally, so whoever owned it must have decided they wanted some additional torque at some point in the distant past. Aside from that modification, all of the other features appear to be original. The fuel pump appears to be in need of replacement. But aside from that, the rest of the damage is cosmetic, and restoring the car to life wouldn't be a big job for a good mechanic. Only 259 of these cars were produced in 1968, so this one is likely to be among the last of a dying breed. Is this next vehicle a boat or a car? Well, actually, it's a bit of both. It's a 1995 Sea Ray boat car. It's said to be the fastest boat on four wheels. The unusual car was listed for sale in Roswell, Georgia, USA in April 2020, with a reserve price of $20,000. It's in near pristine condition, so it's possible that it hasn't been driven once since she was built as a custom order in the mid-1990s. The vehicle we see now started off as a 1995 Ford E350 passenger van which has been combined with a 24-foot-long cabin cruiser with sleeping berths for four adults. We're told that the car comes with air conditioning throughout, though why you'd need that when it's open to the elements anyway is another matter. Even though it looks a lot like a boat, the appearance is purely cosmetic. It's legally permitted to drive this car on the roads, but it's incapable of traveling on or through water. That might make the high price difficult to justify. But if you ever wanted a car that also comes with an anchor fitted, now's your chance. In 1964, Ed Roth designed one of the most unusual looking cars of the decade and asked Ed Newton to build it. The idea was to make a new kind of slingshot dragster with aesthetics influenced by the space age. And the result was the Orbitron bubble car. The asymmetrical design is topped off by what's best described as an enormous torch on the front, which combines green, blue, and red lights into a powerful bright white light beam that would probably dazzle anybody traveling in the opposite direction on the road. Roth showed off his Orbitron at a few car shows in the 1960s, but after that it seemed to disappear. He passed away in 2001, by which time even he didn't know where his concept car had ended up. The mystery was finally solved a few years ago when a team of car detectives tracked it down to the north of Mexico. By that point, it was parked in the street near an adult entertainment store and was being used as a trash can. Amazingly, despite the loss of the bubble roof and one of the axles, the Orbitron was in near complete condition and has since been rescued and restored. In 1934, Philippine plantation owner Eduardo Montanola ordered an Auburn 851 Speedster for the sole purpose of trying to impress a girl. It didn't work. Eduardo's would-be wife had affections for someone else, so he lost interest in the car immediately and passed it on to his brother Renato. Renato loved the car and drove it everywhere, but was forced to hide it in 1941 when the Japanese invaded the Philippines. The Auburn then remained under wraps for a very long time, alone and forgotten. It wasn't found again until 1986, when it was bought by a Brit and shipped back to the United Kingdom. It moved again in 2000 when it went to an American owner who made the questionable decision to refit it with a fake alligator skin interior. 
Fortunately, the current owner has rectified that mistake. The car is now in the hands of its seventh owner and still has fewer than 17,000 miles on the clock. It's one of only 11 right-handed speedsters built between 1935 and 1936. It's a vehicle of vintage pedigree, and now it's been restored after so many years in hiding. It's a beautiful thing to see. Finding a 1967 Triumph Spitfire Mark II is always a treat. Finding one that doesn't have so much as a single speck of rust on it has to be considered a near miracle. Here's that miracle. Listed for sale on the internet in May 2020 as a barn find, legendary car designer Giovanni Michelotti was responsible for creating this version of the Spitfire. And there are many classic car enthusiasts who believe that it represents his finest work. As a 1967 build, it would have been one of the very last to roll off the production line in the company's factory in Coventry, England. The Mark III Spitfire was released in March 1967, and the production of its predecessor stopped immediately. It's clear that this is a spectacular discovery. What's less clear is why it was hidden from the world for so many years and what circumstances led to it being laid up in a barn. Even the interior is in relatively good condition for a car of this advanced age, and the engine looks like it might start up the first time if someone was to turn the key. If you apply a little creative thinking, you can turn almost any car into a hot rod. Some of the models of car make better candidates than others, though, and you'd probably get quite a long way down the list of ideal candidates before you reach the Citroen 2 CV. Nevertheless, here's a Citroen 2 CV that somebody, at some stage in the past, has tried to turn into a hot rod. We say tried because the project has been abandoned in a state of semi-completion. We can't say for sure, but if we had to guess, we'd say that the reason for the abandonment is that it would be a real struggle to fit a V8 engine under this hood without some seriously complicated modifications. That's not to say that some complicated modifications haven't already been performed. The rear wheels have been covered with a pair of wings, giving the vehicle a bizarre appearance. The work is still there to finish if someone feels like they're up to the job. But so much time has passed since it was last worked on that it might be necessary to start all over again. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that the Shelby Cobra was the ultimate 1960s streetcar. It's an iconic vehicle, and anyone who owns one today should consider themselves very lucky. The car did have competition for that title, though, and had things gone differently for designer Bill Thomas, one of those competitors might have taken its place. Thomas was the inventor of the Super Cheetah, and this somewhat shabby-looking shell is the prototype. Thomas intended for the final design to be realized in fiberglass, this model was hammered out of aluminum just for testing purposes. And to show GM. GM was impressed, but they were so worried that it might become a competitor to the Corvette that they withdrew all support from the project. That left Thomas without backing, and he eventually went bankrupt with this unfinished car selling for just $300. That was in 1971. It then disappeared for 40 years before finally resurfacing in 2011 when someone discovered its significance and pedigree. As for its value today, somewhere in the region of two and a half million dollars, even in this state. In 2017, an elderly car collector passed away in Kansas, USA. Everyone knew he had a vast range of valuable cars hidden away in a lockup. Nobody knew just how vast that collection was until the doors were opened and the cars saw the light for the first time in years. It was a line of split-window Volkswagen Beetles that caught the eye first, but soon attention turned to an old Porsche Speedster and a dusty but stunning pair of 1930s BMW 328 Roadsters. Normally speaking, a 328 in this condition would only ever be found in a museum. The deceased former owner had no family, and since the collection was itemized, every single vehicle was placed up for sale. One of the first to go was a Ford Deuce Coupe, a car that almost went unnoticed in the first look around the lockup. For some reason, the Beatles have had their engines removed. 
Perhaps there was a restoration project planned that the owner never got the chance to follow up on. If so, that's someone else's restoration project to take on now. You'd have thought that in the high-tech 21st century, tracking the history of a car would be easy, especially one that comes with as many markings as this 1957 Corvette. From the shape, the modifications, and the markings, it's obvious that at some point in its history, it's been used as a drag racing car. It's sadly just as obvious that it's been dumped and abandoned for a long time and is in dire need of restoration work. It's been left standing in the field for such a long time that birds had started living in it. The writing on the side gives us a few clues. BMSP is the car's racing class it presumably ran in, which was open to modified sports cars during the late 1960s. The names Martin and Holford probably belong to either the drivers or the team that raced the car. Mysteriously, those names are absent from the records of the era. Could it be that the car was intended to race but never made it to the track? Were the necessary modifications never made? More than any of that, who would abandon a car like this in the first place? The Hunky CA770 State Limousine was a popular and successful car in China during the late 1960s and early 1970s, but proved to be a difficult vehicle to replace. One attempt at replacing it came in the shape of the Hongqi CA774, but the doomed vehicle never made it past the prototype stage. Six such prototypes were built, two have been scrapped, two of them are in Hongqi's museum in Changchun, and one is on display at the Beijing Classic Car Museum. The other has somehow ended up in this deplorable state on the parking lot of Beijing's Tsinghua University, where it was discovered in late 2016. Fortunately, we have some images of the car during its working days to show you what it's supposed to look like. The design came from Jia Yanliang, who was only 26 years old when he came up with it. Nobody knows why a car so rare and valuable was left on the parking lot, but it's said to have been there since at least 2004. Considering the fact that the doors are wide open, it's amazing it's lasted this long. Who knows how much longer it'll stay there. Some people say there's no such thing as the perfect barn find. To those people, we offer this collection of five Mercedes-Benz 6.3s from Fort Collins, Colorado, USA. The cars were once the property of a cattleman, but the cattleman passed away in 1994 and left them to his grandson. 21 years later, the grandson decided it was finally time to part with them. By that point, the cars had been in storage for 45 years, that meant they were dusty, but not rusty. Two of the five were highly desirable 1969 models, one of which had only been driven 27,000 miles. Completing the lineup is a gold 1971 model with a wood interior and two more 1971 models, one in blue and one in green. An auction house would probably be the right place to offer these beauties for sale, but they ended up going to the highest bidder on Craigslist. Fortunately, they ended up in the hands of a pair of responsible collectors who have since set about the task of restoring them to full working order. In the America of the 1950s, everyone was very excited about jet engines. Jets were fast, powerful, and futuristic. The influence of the jet age was visible everywhere, and the automobile industry was no exception. Because of that influence, vehicles like the 1958 Plymouth Tornado concept car were created. In basic terms, it's a 1958 Plymouth Fury with some showy modifications. But to talk about it like that doesn't do it justice. With its tail wing, twin exhaust rockets, and aircraft-like nose, this concept car was a vision of the future as it appeared to the engineers of the time. The Tornado was shown off at car shows for the next few years, but found itself in private hands in 1974 when it was bought by a wealthy retired sports star. Just two years later, he passed away, and the car spent the next 30 years in a field outside his home. By the time it was tracked down and identified, it had mice living in the hoses and a hornet's nest in one of the seats. Fortunately, an experienced collector was found in the shape of Moses London, Moses spent the next five years painstakingly restoring the tornado by hand. Looking at it now, you'd never know it had been neglected for a single day. 
subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.